Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's commission time uh, in the studio this morning and um, uh, I've been asked to paint a uh, a lovely building uh, set in uh, quite extensive grounds and um, I did pop over the other day um, and made a pencil sketch. Uh, did take some photographs, but that's the pencil sketch that um, that I made to uh, to get tone values really in composition. Um, obviously, the client needed certain um, uh, one or two little changes that they wanted to build into the scene, and um, so here we go and. That is the drawing. I'll keep the sketch to one side so as we can refer to that in due course. Um, but in the meantime, that's the drawing I have down on my watercolour paper. Um, so quite an imposing um, um, building. And uh, I've not got the tape on the outside. I'm going to use a mount so I can balance the composition when, when I come to, um, to the end of the video. Okay, so um, let's get started. Well, my first priority um, really with any painting is to get the sky in first. Uh, and um, I'm going to have the light coming from the left, uh, left hand side, creating shadows on the building and all the rest of it. Um, but, um, so I need to show a little bit of light in the sky that side. I do want to have a bit of cloud. We've got a reasonable amount of um, uh, of sky, so it would be nice to have a little cloud. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to damp some areas in my normal way, just rolling the brush across the paper like that. Um, damp more this side because I want it to be lighter, because that is the side where the sun will be sort of shining from. We're going to paint around the chimney and the roof line. Okay, well I think that's probably enough. Now to that, so that probably is my cloud work. So to that, I'm going to add Payne's Grey. Now it's, it's a colour, well it's not a colour really, grey, but it's a combination of all the colours I suppose. Um, but Payne's Grey is in effect... Um, ideal for cloud work. Um, it can be used on its own but it can also be used in combination with other colours and I would recommend that you use the Artist Quality Windsor & Newton Payne's Grey because as you can probably see it's slightly on the blue side and all of a sudden I'm creating those lovely clouds, one or two in the distance there. They'll be lost shortly. And just a touch more in that area there. Just running around that chimney line. There we are. Soften that a little and a little bit in the distance. You know, lovely um, cloud work. Just watch. I'm going to just take another brush just to lift off colour um, because let's use a flat for that because there's just a little extra colour there. Okay, now I'm going to have to work quite quickly here and I'm going to use um, raw sienna for the rest of this cloud work. There we are, raw sienna, raw sienna, raw sienna. Get that in fairly quickly. I'm really um, going for it now. Um, that's it. That's good. Bit of raw sienna that side. A little bit blending there. One or two hard edges. One or two soft edges um, to create that sort of cloud effect. That's what I'm looking for. Nothing too fancy. It's um, and while it's still wet, you can still work on it. Just keep it fairly neat around the tops of the chimneys. Painting through. One or two white areas. One or two. Um, yep, that's looking good. Okay. Now, I'm going to have a little burnt sienna now in the sky 
I'm going to use traditional colours, the t traditional landscape colours today. Um, uh, there we are. Just to give it a little bit of warmth. And it will all be revealed at the end when, when I show you why I'm doing that. There we go. That's good. Good. Okay, now we need patches of blue, so I'm going to use a smaller brush here, and I'm going to go in with cerulean in a fairly strong mix. Well, it's not really a mix, so there's a patch of blue there. We need a patch of blue to indicate that we have sunlight, and a nice patch of blue in this damp area there. Don't want to get compli too complicated with this sky, um, but it is nice to have a little bit of blue there just to give atmosphere and a, a nice patch of blue over the top around that chimney. That's um, That sort of appeals to me. Here we go. And then the rest of it is just stroked in like that. Just loosen that off a little. There we are, look at that scrubbing around. Brilliant. Lovely cloud effect there. Yeah, I think that's probably um, not far off what I'm looking for, really. You know, um, don't want to go too dark with that uh, sky. Um, there's a tree there, so we'll leave a bit of sparkle. A little damp down the back there, because that's going to be my distance area. And then we bring... It's all trees and everything here, but we need some background, so let's bring that down into that area like that. Lovely. I think that I'm going to be happy with that. Allow that to dry. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to put in a little bit of distance here. Um, I think there's a conifer that stands up somewhere here, but... Um, I'm just going to show a little bit of distant green and for that I'm going to use the Payne's Grey with Cadmium Yellow and you will get a bit of dull distant green with that mix because it, the, the, the client required a, a summer version so although it's winter time well it's, it's actually is summer basically um, but um, and I'm just going to show some softening, just if there's some trees and bits and bobs going uh, uh, along the top there. Then as I come down, I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt blue to that to, to get a bit of depth right down the side of the building, around the top of that old summer house. That's a nice little feature. Make that fairly dark there. And once we get to the lower area, and I'm going to use the same colour, this side too, perhaps a little weaker, just to give some background to, because there are trees and things going on in the background there. So just to give a little bit of interest, really, we've got we've got a, a lovely little uh, Wendy house there that I understand was built uh, by a member of the family. Can't quite remember, but. There we are. So that's all very good. And then I think I'll leave a crisp edge there. OK, so that's the first washes of this lovely old building. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to put a wash of colour in the foreground. I'm going to start off with raw sienna. Although it's it, it's it's obviously green grass and what have you there. Um, but uh, let's start off with raw sienna. Want light on this uh, grass? Really strong raw sienna there. It won't come up that strong. But I'm going to paint. There's a flower bed there, and an ornamental kingfisher. Not kingfisher. Sorry. It's an ornamental. Just let me finish this across here. Heron. 
just finish that across there sorry um right yeah an ornamental herring now i'm adding a little bit of lemon yellow or no ca cadmium yellow into that see where it's beginning to turn a stronger green now than the raw sienna and i'm introducing that so that that creates a light on the building you know that's really what we're what we're looking for and cadmium yellow as i say i'm using a little more traditional landscape um colors for this um because i think it, it is a traditional building you know it's a lovely sort of um substantial building um set in its own grounds i've got a hair from the brush there don't like to keep chasing that around um there you go and it's just a matter of applying clean washers now to that i'm now going to add a little winds of blue to create a slightly more you know a slightly different green oh and i tell you what i will do to that i'm going to add burnt sienna so it's winds of blue burnt sienna and cadmium yellow that will give me a more earthy green there we are look at that isn't that a lovely green? Whatever you do to one side of that bird bath, you've got to do to the other. There we are. Just bring that up. I don't want light and to the edge. I want it more into that area. Lead the eye to the front of the building. And then, of course, as we come forward, cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, winds of blue, creating a considerable strong green perhaps even a little texture oh there's a there is a small little garden area there around the that's it brilliant bit more cadmium yellow bit more burnt sienna bit more windsor oh that's nice don't let that go too dark too early but it is nice and let's just spread that through we're going to have a feeling of light coming from the left hand side anyway uh, I love that feeling of light there see that 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 streak of yellow and there that will all be of a real advantage and then I'm putting in just the odd patch of almost neat burnt sienna You've got to remember that when you paint you've got to think about colors complementary colors do one does one color match another colour. In other words, do they complement each other? And red and green, so brown and green, complement each other. Okay, that now needs to be allowed to completely dry. Okay, well that's beginning to dry as you can see. Um, now I'm going to paint the roof. Nice to get the roof in. I've got the land, I've got the sky. Let's concentrate a little bit on the building. Um, now, it's grey tiled, um, a slate, um, and to get my favourite mix for grey slate, which might surprise some people, um, it surprised me when I discovered it, um, is Windsor Blue with Indian Red. A lovely slaty grey from that. Obviously, more red you use, the warmer the grey, the more of the blue the cool the grey um, and uh, then of course there's a density of it how much paint um, versus water more water more pa paper shines through and you end up with a, um, a weaker colour uh, more paint um, a stronger colour so that's pretty much basic really now we're going to use leave the ridge tile or no let's paint the ridge tile first because that is also grey slate so let's paint the ridge tile in first and getting a little bleed there because it's still slightly damp not too concerned about that there we are and I'm just dropping in the ridge tile and if you notice I'm leaving some little gaps here and there um, purely to show that they are s segments or individual t ridge ridging tiles really I don't 
go any fussy with this quite you know quite random good okay so the next thing we need to do is to paint the actual tile itself and it's slightly warm so I'm going to go more on the red side of this grey hopefully that comes up red and it needs to be quite dark although that's not all that dark and I want to bleed some of that um, tile work that ridge tile work in to the the colour and not along the top because that's where there we are that's good that's where the um the edging would show along the gutter line and I'm leaving one or two little patches of white one or two small patches of white then I'm adding a little more red for the and I'm painting across for the more the roof that stands facing us really and notice how I'm painting across leaving some white paper that gives the whole thing sparkle nothing worse than painting everything in you know don't show the viewer too much you know that's my um my philosophy anyway whether that's right or not i'm not sure but then we've got that lovely um sloping roof to the uh, extension there at the side now the chimneys they are red brick but they're slightly on the gray side so i'm going to use those same two colors only with a little more red in the mix and um this one is more or less, we're, we're standing on this sort of level. As we come round, you'll begin to see the sides of those chimneys, but you don't see the side of that one. So that's the top there like that. Don't think they've got much of an overhang of brickwork at the top, but we'll put a little in just to, there we are. And notice how, you know, I've left a bead of white down that right hand side, gives an indication of sunlight coming from that direction. I've got a feeling that sits over the back. So that's the first chimney. Right. Now we're going to paint this one in. And I'm leaving the sunlit side unpainted. So a little bead down there unpainted. And paint it fairly quickly. Don't want to get too, too bogged down um, with these um, chimneys. And even wider area there, because as I said, it's the perspective of the picture. That's the reason I've left that. There we are. And that hill obviously has to slope down there like that. Um, next, I will paint the chimneys. Now, these are red, and I'm going to use light red for that. Um, a lovely light red complements that. And if it runs into the chimney, so much the better. There we go. So that's a nice dark light red um, for the chimney pots. Good. Okay, that's looking fantastic. Okay, now we've produced the, the roof work, the chimneys. I'm going to leave the sunlit side of those chimneys there, just white at this stage. And we'll see how we go on that. Now, the frontage of the building, there's a climber. And it's a very red during the summer, end of the summer, I would imagine. Um, um, but um, so the client expressed that I put that in if I could. But behind that, so there's lots of red going on. But there is areas of brickwork where you can see the house. And that's there. And the brick on this side is quite new. Um, and it also runs down there like that. Runs down that side. So this area, I'm just showing without climber. And there will be another little area under there. But that is in shadow anyway. So... 
maybe we can see that there right on the edge there we are there's a climber there all will be revealed when i get to the um final um painting stage or they'll probably see some red brick there as well uh, there's a couple of one or two quite a, quite a lot of planting area uh, there's a bird feeder there or table um, a water feeder there um, and that goes virtually under the eave so I might leave that there's an area there so that's the first stage one or two little patches of red just showing through around underneath that window one or two little patches here and there there's also one or two little patches of this red good okay that's the first part then it's it's there's there's another part there that's also red um red brick but we begin to see less of that let's just run across the top there there is just some small soldier bricks that stand up over the top begin to see less of this now um, just a little bit there perhaps nice to introduce a little bit of that red um, maybe in the lower area there we could probably see some red uh, certainly under that window we'd see some red because the, the climber hasn't quite gone across there and besides all that it's nice to show you know it doesn't want to be all climber in the front of the building there's a there's a nice round table bench affair there um, barbecue bench and we can go under that leave a little patch of white there. there's all going to be lots of things going on but loads of planting and what have you so that's why i'm leaving quite a bit of that and there is a little bit of this red there now this is the older part of the building i would imagine so we're using a little bit of the Payne's grain there just to kill the color just a touch i don't want to completely kill the color but um and of course under guttering again windows come quite close to the um to the overhang of the roof just about see looks to me as if they do keep it well trimmed so it doesn't get into the gutter so consequently um, we're gonna see a bit of this bricking um, not much down in the lower area um, a little bit there perhaps but other than that it's going to be the the creeper that runs around um, so we'll allow that to dry now that is allowed to dry quite well now I've got that creeper now um, and it could be difficult to handle um, but I've got my ideas of how to, to, to treat it um, and what I like to do to start with is just to put a very weak wash here and there of that under colour for the brickwork so that some of the bricking will be seen here and there where there's gaps so it's not all white paper that's the idea of leaving that sort of um, just taking off a lot of the white paper or some of it anyway albeit in the same colour right and now I clean the brush and I'm going to use cadmium red for this cadmium red with and I'm thinking about this a touch of raw sienna does that give us the red I'm looking for the slightly dull orangey red I think it probably does don't want to be too stark with this put a bit of light red with that as well oh, that's better there we are with a bit of raw sienna again there we are i think that's sort of the red i'm looking for it is a brilliant red but i don't want to be too you know if i overdo the red it's going to dominate the whole picture so let's just paint a bit of that through there that's it that's the color i'm looking for you know it's amazing how um with a little bit of thought you can end up with um, 
sort of colour you're looking for and it's still a little damp in places and I'm leaving some little touches of white and this creeper runs and it actually hangs over the window so the windows are not perfectly formed in their shapes um, because you obviously have this um, lovely creeper that's uh, running over the back of the house which you know to be fair to the client it um, it does it's a big feature of the of the property and it does um, in many ways enhance the um, the overall effect I suppose and I'm being a little careful leaving some white paper notice how I'm leaving some white paper here and there um, and yeah I think I've already got the effect of that that sort of creeper version it's flat at the moment it will obviously need some uh, attention um, later on but um, we begin to see it you know with, with a little bit of um, handling of the color um, we can enhance it dot it around get little bits just overhanging here and there uh, there like that just gradually working my way across really oh and there's a bit coming down there I've got a feeling it they've made like a hedge area where it goes round that window so that might, that's interesting near the door the patio door there and a touch more, touch more red to that that's it and where are we now don't want to lose the look of little bits and pieces by doing it too fast but that's texture will show later on with shadow work and all the rest of it and it gets a bit open here um, a bit lighter so the brushes run out of paint so that's lovely um, that's good good I think we can safely say that that has picked up the red of the creeper the initial start anyway okay well just to save a little time on the viewing I've just put in the um, the bird um, bath in the foreground the brick bird bath I've put in the um, the small little Wendy house on the right and a bit of colour to the um, uh, the summer house on the left um, now I'm going to show you how to or at least start to show you how to put the windows in now I'm going to use they're very dark but there is a bit of reflection in there so what I'm going to do first I'm going to use ultramarine blue to start with and I'm going to add burnt sienna to that to get me a quite a dark actually I'm going to use burnt umber I need it darker than that there you go nice dark window albeit you know I know we've got sunlight on the building but we want the windows to be fairly dark now these are virtually solid dark but if you notice I'm painting quite loosely leaving lots of areas of white because I want to indicate sunlight hitting parts of those width of that window now there is another window here that is of the same but it just shows at the base there I think don't think you'll see much of the top because it's quite a plant quite a creeper over the top of a uh, of a support there and now this window is interesting because we've got a window there we've got another one there which should match similar size we do have another one there with a little bit of that creeper just remember that as you as you paint these areas and another one there right okay okay yeah I'm just looking at the build the window now 
going to add a little more blue to this now um, because we've got a nice dark area there and that's dark some of that is dark and then I'm painting down it's quite a large area of window then about that sort of point you begin to see the window in the front of the building coming through and that sort of finishes down there and to show that I'm now going to add, clean the brush slightly add a little more blue to the mix so it's lighter and bluer and that then is the reflection of use a bit of that as well of the window inside so we've got two tones there and now I'm going to continue working my way through um, the rest of the windows. Well, there you are. Just putting in the last window now. Uh, so after this one's finished, the windows and the main build are correct. Oh, there's a bar across there. Hmm, missed that. Right, okay. Not too concerned about that. Um, I can lift that off just to show that shortly okay so that's that then we do have the window there that I'm going to give a bit of life to and we do have a window within the door there little Wendy house lovely little building built by a member of the family I understand lovely thing to do when you're um, you know you're living somewhere you love to build these um, window there too there we are um, well I would love to anyway myself um, and then we're just going to put some windows in here um, forget how they go oh right okay they're sort of like a, a line and then a section like that I understand I'm going to have a lot of greenery over that there's one two three there's four windows in the door opening there you go so we can be quite happy with that as a suggestion and after all this is a painting it's not a copy of a photograph got to remember that when you're painting okay so that's all the windows in Okay, well I've just popped a mount over the top, just so as you can, uh, or I can actually see, you know, the composition um, without any jagged edges. Um, and it's all very light, very bright. i um, just got to put some, I just want to put some greenery in now, really. Well, I'm going to start with the front of the building. I want to get some greenery in there. Then I'll work to the outer edges. Green's coming in there. Now, there is a wisteria there that wouldn't be in flower when this creeper had um, leafing um, in that colour. So, um, <clears throat> I'm actually going to put that in with greenery. So, um, it's really burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, and a touch of Windsor blue. That will give me my sort of nice... Nice rich green. I'm going to start off quite light, well, quite yellow, and I'm going to put it in with a um, a flat. Now I don't want too much paint on the brush, and I'm going to use the side of the brush. It's quite dense, but we need on the particularly at the top and those outside edges. We need. Show you how to get some texture to this. So, see how I'm leaving white paper? Not as much at the bottom edge, but certainly the top and right hand side. And it just comes over that window. Yep, and from that, there is just a little bit of that just creeping up into that creeper there. Goes up a little bit higher. And just before that dries, we add a little more blue. And a little more brown, burnt sienna, to get, uh, well, it's quite dark, but I'm 
not over concerned with that. There we are. Nice dark underside just before it dries. You get a bit of softening. Layers of that wisteria. Just laying like that. And a little bit laying over that window. Some undersides there. There we are. And all of a sudden, we've got a sense of that wisteria um, on. So it's like a pergola affair, really. I don't know. Um, okay. Now, the next stage will be it's a couple of these dark, sort of more earthy green um, trimmed um, planting areas there or, or so that's like that they're, they're sort of like clumps of that just finishes there and then just going to use a lightly damped brush to create the lighter side of those like that there we are so we've got the dark and the light uh, they're quite well trimmed those um, right then with this damp brush again got sort of a yellowing well that's not very yellow right clean that brush up start again Sort of a yellow, sort of a planting shrub affair there. Um, obviously the client will know what it is. <coughs> and a little bit more brown in the next one. Um, there's another one there. It's a little on the brown side at this stage of the year. Um, according to that, um, there we go. So there's all sorts of little planting and things going on there. And a bit of raw sienna um, for uh, a little bit of planting here, perhaps, along the border there. A bit more blue in this now. Don't want to overdo this. Um, just want to show little touches um, bird table to go in shortly show a bit of light there and of course there's two lovely little shrubs that stand either side there's one there and there's one just tucked over the back there next to the lovely little Wendy house and there again, I'm going to clean the brush and put a light colour, light yellow green onto the sunlit side, just to show shape and form. Once you do that, you've got a rounded feel to the shrub or the bush or whatever it is. Um, that's good. Okay, that's all looking pretty, pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is a large conifer here. First thing I'm going to do, though, is to paint in some greenery around the back of that summer house. Now you watch me um, bring that to life. Now to start with, there is a form of a tree and let's use the side of the brush for that. It's a very small sort of tree affair there. So let's get that in first. We've got the conifer coming over that so we're not concerned about form and shape of that. And of course, then there's another one here. And I'm using a different sort of technique for that. And then we come back into something a little darker as we come down to the lower area. But of course, the summer house actually stands in front of that dark area. It's all part of that tree and over the back there. And that all of a sudden shapes up and as we come down there, you begin to see the sunlight on the shrub itself, on the, the Wendy house itself. So that's the way you do it. It's, um, uh, you know, it's just knowing really how to show off your, um, 
your trees and a bit more dark areas there and then of course we come down into a quite a dark area here while that's still damp and that shows off that back edge now that is going to be fairly dark there we are look at that and that all of a sudden shows that back edge up but of course just a dark line is not sufficient it's got to be justified um, on the outside edge, nice and neat around the building but of course as you come down into that outside edge it has to show um, a little bit of life and fairly dark around there but then it can get light again to indicate some shrubbery um, or some planting in the lower area that's a little bit lighter and um, whether that's going to be in it or not I'm not sure um, just a little hint at some little light there, uh, a little bit there. There we are. Not rocket science, really, as far as that goes. Right, now we have the large conifer. Now, we have to get this right, because if we don't, unfortunately, it's not going to, you know, it's a dominant feature. It's quite a large feature. And we do need to get this right. So it is dark green. Put a bit of brown with it. Just to take off that rich green. Right. Now, here we go with the large conifer. And starting off in the centre there to see whether you've got those. And work your way out. If you've got the brush correctly loaded like that. Quite open, I notice this dense in the centre, quite open, and you paint the way it grows. So it's dense in the centre, it springs out on the outside edges, load the brush. It's quite an old um, conifer, large, large feature, and of course it shows up more or less like that. Yeah, it's coming along. That's looking quite good. A bit more blue, a bit more brown, a bit more yellow. I want a more earthy green. That's it. That's the green we're looking for. Quite earthy in the lower area. Doesn't hurt to ch ring the changes with your colours as you're working. Um, it's so easy just to keep um, the same colour all the way down. And of course, if you don't change the colour as you work, then obviously um, you do end up with the same colour all the way down. And then as I head towards the bottom, I'm going to get quite dark. Look how dark that is, particularly on the right hand side. There we go. But on the left hand side, I'm just opening up. So as we can see a little bit of the, and it's quite a substantial uh, tree in the lower part. It just lays on the lawn really, um, which um, will be particularly dark. So there's plenty of blue going in there and it just sort of lays around like that on the lawn itself and it spreads out quite considerably along the lawn area and it just lays like that um, yeah yeah let's just add a, a little more of this darker color onto this right hand side as we go up just to show shape and form don't want to disrupt too much of that lovely light effect there you go Bit bit there just to take off that don't want a dead line running up don't want sort of like light and then dark it needs to be justified good okay so that's the large conifer in okay well I've moved over to the left I'm using a larger um, flat now purely because this clump of I don't know whether that's a, a small tree or a large shrub and or I'm not sure where one begins and the other one finishes in trees and shrubs but 
to be fair, um, it's nearer. So I've used a larger brush, so I get much bolder, larger brush uh, strokes. It looks closer to us, you see. That's the way I see it anyway. That's the my principle of painting. And I'm starting off with a little raw sienna in there, so as it's not too... Uh, too much the same colour as the rest, but it will be very similar because I'm using, still using the Windsor Blue. Um, right, let's Windsor Blue Raw Sienna, Cadmium Yellow. So that'll give me, and I'm going to use. I'll tell you what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a little. Ring the changes. Use a little bit of light red in that. That's unusual, but it will make it more earthy. A bit more. There we are. Uh, it's not as transparent, the raw sienna, or what I've got there. Um, right, let's now loosen the mix up. Cadmium now, raw sienna, and a little red. The red will help to give me a slightly different dark colour and as that sneaks across I'm going to use more the point of the brush as well so as I can show um, a bit more sort of and it just overhangs it's not actually in the background it's in the, the light area but it just overhangs I'm adding a bit more bit of burnt sienna now because that's as I've mentioned before, a nice bit of burnt sienna in there, always a good um, good thing to introduce into your greens because it's on the red side. Just there we go. That's good. It, it holds that left hand side in, and uh, it's going to be quite dark now. And that will later on be justified by a very dark shadow cast in the foreground and that just overhangs just just cuts or just hides that back edge of that um, there we are, lovely old tree you know you try and paint the way they grow really you know uh, I'm going to be lighter so a bit more yellow a bit more water for the lower part of that see if it's just lightened up where it overhangs the garden area. A lot of this won't be in the picture. It will be out of on the mount. So, and then I'm going to go very dark again just to get two tones and this is extremely dark in this lower area there, the lower area there, just on the underside of that and on the underside of that little devil there. Look at that. And all of a sudden, you've got a rounded shape. As I say, some of that won't actually be in the uh, painting, but at least it, you've got a variety of tones and colours. Then, of course, it overhangs into a planting area, really. Not sure what would be in there um, at this time of year. Um, that This is, you know, this more summer. Um, but it does balance well, so I think that's probably worked quite well. Okay, let me finish off the lower planting area. Well, as you can see, I've attended to other little bits and pieces, just to cut the time of the video down a bit, really. But I've added a little bit of um, uh, planting to the border there. I've added the, um, uh, the bird on the table. Um, and a little bit of greenery in places um, and um, uh, so you know it's it's gradually coming along and um, now it's really there's the basic composition now it's the my favorite part of the painting which will be the um, shadows so let's get cracking now my mix for shadows is I'm going to use Cerulean Blue, could be 
um, if you really wanted to it could be um, cobalt blue um, then I'm going to use a little winter blue just to darken it and then I'm going to use just thinking here um, I'm actually going to use Indian red that will sort of give me a nice soft shadow don't want to be too heavy with this shadow um, to take away from the, the, the you know it's it's sunlit but it's not uh, and it's slightly blue now sun coming from the left I've got to imagine these shadows so there will be a shadow running up from the chimney that like that because obviously the sun is on the front of the building so that's my first shadow gone in and that finishes on the top there there would be no shadow from that because I think it stands behind that area now there will be a shadow on the brickwork there like that just weakening that shadow so it's still a little on the strong side it's a nice blue shadow just what I'm looking for then there is a casting shadow over the windows and where the creeper will start to show it gets a little sort of uneven and then it goes back along the window again to the corner of that build so this is what you've got to watch that you know if there's any around that creeper because the creeper stands away then obviously it would not have the full shadow on it so that shadow would be just tucked under there but the shadow would then creep over the window but then the creeper would take away from the shadow again so it's it's uneven in places that's the interesting thing when you're creating shadows there's no one where to put them that's the key to it there you go so that's the shadow for the overhang of the gutter um, then we will have a shadow um, now I'm thinking now ah oh, right yes where you've got the creeper you will get a little shadow running down the window on that side because that creeper stands away let's lose a little bit more paint from that brush so just a little bit of hinting at shadow down that where that creeper is casting the shadow onto that area there that's lovely yeah that's that's successful and of course in the lower part of the window the, the lower windows that will have a shadow from the overhanging creeper there as well and of course down the side there from the creeper itself lovely bronze sort of and that would be quite an uneven sort of shadow and there as well from the creeper itself there you go look at that I think I've pretty much nailed that right now we carry on with oh I'll tell you where there will be a shadow trees coming along the back casting a shadow I think there's a fence there but I'm not going to I'm just going to put in a shadow like that okay just to knock off that you know I want depth there if I were to put a, a fence there um, I think it would um, it wouldn't look quite the same now um, just going to sneak a touch down that back edge shouldn't really because in theory it shouldn't be in shadow but and then down the back of that that's the another bird bath but then of course this is all dark under here where it's in shadow from the wisteria that's not in leaf at the moment right and then of course there's shadow under the table a little bit of shadow here a bit of shadow there that's cast a shadow this casts a shadow up there a little bit of shadow work it's all very sort of suggestive then that 
would cast a shadow on the wall. Now isn't that atmospheric? It wouldn't be over that planter, but it would be on that wall, like that. Sorry, that bird bath, but it's on that wall like that. And that gives it a bit more atmosphere. So much so. Good, 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 good. Don't go too far with that, Colin. Having to talk to myself now. <clears throat> Good, that's fine. Right, now the next area of shadow will be the overhang of that. It's got quite an overhang shadow. A little bit on there, not too much. Quite a considerable overhang shadow. Uh, the door will cast a shadow on the reveal of the door. Down the side there. And I'm going to have the reveal of the window on that, just to give it... Oh, and the back edge, of course, where we've got the bricking. It's not in shadow, not in sunlight. And then, of course, the back of that conifer is casting a shadow there. The back of that casting down onto the summer house. There we go. Look at that. And all of a sudden, the summer house springs into life. It really is as simple as that in many ways but I know you know it's not um, it's not quite as simple as that but it is if you know what I mean right now this is going to be a weaker shadow don't want that to be too dark but of course the summer house is in shadow at the front like that and let's just put a little bit of shadow onto the windows there just to lose it a little bit. Then I'm picking up some dark paint again to show the casting shadow from that, from the sun house. And a little bit more under there just to make it a little darker, a little bit stronger. There you go. That'll gradually blend nicely, soften back. Yep, that's looking pretty good to me. Right, now where else do we need it? Well, some of this creeper will actually have some shadow. I'm going to have some shadow like that, a little bit like that. I'm going to have to sort of rub it away a little here and there because if we don't, we don't get the feeling that we've got depth to that. Not a great deal, but just a little here and there. Just generally suggesting a little bit of... There we go. And of course, where that stands away from the wall, that will be shadowed as well. like that there you go a little bit there where the building separates from the other part and just a little bit of there just to show that um, the overhang of that planting go like that that's it or oh, a little bit on un the under sill there we can see under the sill of that one can't see there oh we can see under the sill of that one nice to have a and you can't see that one won't see that one either a little bit of there we are that's good we're going to sharpen the windows up shortly and there is just a little bit of brick detail on the uh, outside edge there like that. So just to show that really. A little bit of brick detail there. Good, okay. 
Now I'm going to sweep across the shadow in the foreground. Now for the shadow in the foreground and cast from um, the Kingfisher, not sorry, not the Kingfisher, um, um, from um, the birds that are there. Um, and I'm going to cast the shadow across like that and it's going to be a little warmer. Cast across there like that. Across there like that. Down the tree. There we go. And the main area of shadow will come in at the side there. Like that. And it runs across like that. Putting like that. Now, lovely. Right, now I'm going to add a lot more blue into this to give me a, a, a slightly bluer colour. Nice and dark and lift it away as you paint through because that's where you get the feeling of light. A broken light too. Don't overdo that. That's it. That's good. Just a little bit more there. Then, of course, we've got the casting shadow from this little feature. Which would go something similar to that. And it would just show a little bit at the top, I suppose. Just guessing at this, really. A little bit wider at the bottom. There we go. And then we just weaken the colour and just sweep that across the foreground. Not as strong because this is a bit more sort of an atmospheric sort of um, wash of colour really. Just over the base of that so that, that stands in sunlight. There we go, look at that. And a little bit this side, not too much. Just a little bit of hinting at shadow work. Then we've got a cast of light. Then we've got another shadow area there that sweeps across like that to give us a lovely sort of entrance into the picture. And that just sweeps across like that. Just to give a bit of texture to the whole thing. Good. Okay then. Let's allow that to completely dry. Okay, well I've swept across the, the, the foreground sh uh, with shadow work. Now I'm looking at putting in finishing touches to the actual building itself. Now to start with, I'm going to put in some slightly darker shadows for and it's going to be burnt sienna. I want to re remove plenty of colour. I need just a slightly darker shadow here and there. That's still too damp. So let's get rid of that. It's got to be very sort of bluey. That's it, get rid of some. Right. Still too damp. Mustn't blob. It's got to be completely. I've got to kill that brush off. There we are. That's better. Just to show up the light on that. Good. I think that probably does it for that. Then finally. The next but final thing will be that little edging that I love to put in with, let's use Indian red and blue, plenty of red and Windsor blue. And I'm just sharpening up edges now. For instance, um, uh, Let's just get that ridge tile clearly defined. Just hinting. 
I'm going to make them too bulky um, because it's not a bulky area of ridge tile. comes down to there and it overhangs like that we are just take off a bit of that so that it's not too not look for too much detail but just the odd hint that it's um something's going on there same there and the same down there don't want to get it over so you can get over fussy Yep, now uh, darker area on the left hand side of the chimney just so that they really stand out nicely. Um, that's good. Don't think there's much else to be done to that. Um, we must be getting there really. I can't really see that there's too much more to do. Oh, I do see where there is a nice shadow that I've yet to put in and that's on the underside down I'll put that in, in this dark colour and sloping like that look at that doesn't that bring into that into sunlight can't beat shadows to bring your work together good okay we've just got to analyse what we've done really Okay, well I've dropped the mount over the top. I think that's about the composition that I'm looking for. I've just used the a very dry brush just to enhance the the, the feeling of um, of a creeper there running up the over the over the complete frontage of that building. See the way I've done that. I've just I've not got rid of too much of the sunlit areas. You soon cover it all up and you've lost that effect. But I think that's sufficient to show that. And apart from signing it, just one other thing I want to do. With the shadow areas, I want to show the overhanging area there. Just pick up the bit of detail where it sort of that creeper overhangs so it's, it's just it just enhancing that edge really you know in the shadow area and also there and there because the sun's coming from the left so it's down that edge there as well here we go good and then we just show one or two other little bits and pieces it might be in a corner for there within that shadow um, just one or two little touches but overall I'm pretty much happy with that uh, oh, what about the windows what about enhancing the windows a touch the glazed areas let's just tidy those up that's always a good thing to do well sometimes a good thing to do just checking that this does work I think it does I think that's fine just to give that sense of added shadow brilliant looking good now all we've got to do is sign it and I'm going to sign it as I always do in the paint that I've used and I would think that the composition is about like that. And I'm going to sign it in this right hand bottom corner. There we are. Always a good thing to do. Sign all your work. Brilliant. Well, if you enjoyed watching that video, please stay tuned to my YouTube channel. And uh, anyone wishing for commissions to be painted then please contact me um, and uh, click the link at the bottom right hand corner to follow my youtube channel thank you very much for watching